You were against same-sex marriage, now you're for it. You defended President Obama's immigration policies, now you say they're too harsh. You supported his trade deal dozens of times. You even called it the gold standard. Now, suddenly, last week, you're against it. Will you say anything to get elected? Well, actually, I have been very consistent over the course of my entire life. Do you think New York State should recognize gay marriage? No. No. Okay. I believe that marriage is not just a bond, but a sacred bond between a man and a woman. I have uh, not uh, supported same-sex marriage. I have supported civil partnerships and uh, contractual relationships. I support marriage for lesbian and gay couples. I support it personally and as a matter of policy and law. I have a strong record. I have a great commitment to this issue, and I am proud of what I've done and the progress we're making. Yeah, I'm saying, I'm sorry, I, I just want to clarify what I was saying. No, I, I was saying that you maybe really believed this all along, but, you know, believed in gay marriage all along, but felt for political reasons, America wasn't ready yet and you couldn't say it. That's what I was thinking. No, that, no, that is not true. <laughs> it really is great how long you've supported great gay marriage. Yes. I, I could have supported it sooner. Well, you did it pretty soon. Yeah. Could have been sooner. Fair point. <laughs> the people that are most affected by what's happening are African American and Hispanic people. It's, it's really unfortunate that he paints such a dire negative picture of black communities in our country. Ugh. You know, the vibrancy of the black ch I do want to bring up the fact that you were the one that brought up the word super predator about young black youth. They are often the kinds of kids that are called super predators. No conscience, no empathy. He paints such a dire negative picture of black communities in our country. They are often the kinds of kids that are called super predators. No conscience, no empathy. A personal account or a government account. I did not send classified material and I did not receive any material that was marked. From the group of 30,000 emails, returned to the State Department in 2014, 110 emails in 52 email chains have been determined by the owning agency to contain classified information at the time they were sent or received. I represented Wall Street as a senator from New York, and I went to Wall Street in December of 2007, before the big crash that we had, and I basically said, cut it out, quit foreclosing on homes, Quit engaging in these kinds of speculative behaviors. Now, who's exactly to blame for the housing crisis? I think there's plenty of uh, blame to go around. Home buyers who paid extra fees to avoid documenting their income should have known they were getting in over their heads. Now, you want to approve Trans-Pacific Partnership. You were totally in favor of it. Then you heard what I was saying, how bad it is, and you said, I can't win that debate. But you know that if you did win, you would approve that, and that will be almost as bad as NAFTA. Nothing will ever well, top NAFTA. That, that is just not accurate. I uh, was against it once it was finally negotiated and the terms were laid out. I wrote about that in... You called it the gold I standard. About, well, I hope... You called I, it the gold standard of trade and, deals. You, you know said what? it's the finest deal you've ever seen. No. And then you heard what I said about it and all of a sudden you were against it. Well, Donald, I know you live in your own reality, but oh, yeah. that is not the fact. This TPP sets the gold standard in trade agreement. Gold standard in trade agreement. I oppose it now. I'll oppose it after the election, and I'll oppose it as president. Senator Sanders keeps bringing up the speeches that you gave to Goldman Sachs. So I'd like to ask you, you've said that uh, you don't want to release the transcripts until everybody does it. But if there is nothing in those speeches that you think would change voters' minds, why not just release the transcripts and put this whole issue to bed? You know. an issue. When I was in public service serving as the senator from New York, I did stand up to the banks. I did make it clear that their behavior would not be excused. I'm the only one on this stage 
who did not vote to deregulate swaps and derivatives as Senator Sanders did, <laughs> which led to a lot of the problems that we had with Lehman Brothers. Now, if you're going to look at the problems that actually caused the Great Recession, you got to look at the whole picture. It was a giant insurance company, AIG. It was an investment bank, Lehman Brothers. It was mortgage companies like Countrywide. I'm not saying that Senator Sanders did something but, untoward Madam, when he voted to Madam deregulate Secretary, swaps will. and derivatives, One but second, the fact Senator is, Sanders. he did. And that what contributed about, to what about, the collapse of what Lehman about the Brothers, which started the cascade oh, in the Great Recession. Senator Sanders, one second, please. Secretary Clinton, the question was about the transcripts of the speeches to Goldman Sachs. Why not release them? I have said, look, there, there, are certain, there are certain expectations when you run for president. This is a new one. And I've said, if everybody agrees to do it, because there are speeches for money on the other side, I know that. But I will tell you this, there is, there is a long-standing expectation that everybody running release their tax returns. And you can, go, you can go to my website and see eight years of tax returns, and I've released 30 years of tax returns. We, and I think every candidate, including Senator Sanders and Donald Trump, should do the same. Secretary Clinton, we're going to get to the tax returns later, but just to put a button on this, you're running now for the Democratic nomination. Right. And it, it is your Democratic opponent and many Democratic voters who want to see those transcripts. It's not about the Republicans at this point. Let's set the same standard for everybody. When everybody does it, okay, I will do it. But let's set and expect the same standard on tax returns. Everybody does it, and then we move forward. Going through the emails, um, there were over 60,000 in total sent and received. About half were work-related and went to the State Department, um, and about half were personal that were not in any way related to my work. When you speak to the public, you say, I turned over everything. That's, for the most part, a direct quote. When you talk to the public, you say, I turned over everything. 90 to 95 percent of and my work-related emails were in the state system. If they wanted to that, see them, they would certainly have been able to do what? so. You that, know what? That is, that is maybe the tenth time you have cited that figure today. It is. And I have not heard anyone other than you ever cite that figure. Wh who told you that 90 to 95 percent of your emails were, on the state, were in the State Department system? Who told you that? We learned that from the State Department and their analysis of, uh, the, of the emails that were already on the system. The Inspector General report found that less than 1%, less than 1% of State Department emails, record emails, were captured. So they give a number of less than 1% and you give a number of 90%. Hillary Clinton's attempt to tout her foreign policy experience hounded her again on the campaign trail today. I made, uh, you know, I uh, made a, a mistake in, in describing it. I she claimed she misspoke times. last week and was sleep deprived when she described landing under sniper fire in Tuzla, Bosnia, something that didn't happen. But CBS News has found several times in the past few months when Senator Clinton used the Bosnia trip to try to show her international experience. December in Iowa. You know, we landed in one of those corkscrew landings and ran out because they said there might be sniper fire. I don't remember anybody offering me tea on the tarmac when that was happening. Then in February. The welcoming ceremony had to be moved inside because of sniper fire. And last week. And, uh, I remember landing under sniper fire. We basically were told to run to our cars. Now that is what happened. Just some differing accounts of your trip to Bosnia, and I'm wondering if you can clarify. I know you, you recall uh, you know, ducking under sniper fire, and, and Sinbad in his account who's on the trip, he, he said that the most dangerous part was remembering where he was going to eat next. Did, did you He's actually, a comedian, you know, Jeff. <laughs> <Say it. laughs> He's a comedian. So you actually recall, you know, hearing gunfire and were you when we about? were When we were flying into Bosnia, we came in in an uh, evasive maneuver. Um, there was no greeting ceremony. 
and we basically were told to run to our cars. Now that is what happened. After CBS News video showed what really happened when she landed and greeted officials, Senator Clinton maintained there were risks, but explained to the Philadelphia Daily News why she was seen on the Bosnian tarmac greeting a young child if it was really so dangerous. I was also told that the greeting ceremony had been moved away from the uh, tarmac, but that there was this eight-year-old girl, and I said, well, I, have, I, can't, I can't rush by her. I've got to at least greet her. So I greeted her, I took her stuff, and I left. Now that's my memory of it. Good to see you. Once again, her memory doesn't match our videotape. <laughs> she and her daughter Chelsea lingered on the tarmac to greet U.S. So military glad. officials, took photos, there was the group of seventh graders on the tarmac, too. And then Senator Clinton walked to the armored vehicle where she did eventually dock and enter. Hey guys, thank you for watching the video. If you guys like the video, please subscribe. I'm about to reach 20,000 subscribers and it's really exciting. Check out my other videos and bye.